Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important session. Today we are going to read about a very new and upcoming topic that is acute leukemia of mixed or ambiguous lineage. Sometimes the examiners also call it as MPAL that is mixed phenotype acute leukemia. Okay. So very commonly it is asked as a long answer question in the exam and it is also a very important exam viva question. So without wasting any time, let us begin today's topic of discussion. So what is this acute leukemia of mixed or ambiguous lineage? So these are leukemias composed of more than equal to 20% abnormal progenitors that do not show differentiation along a single lineage. Now this is a very very simple and simplified definition. So we are going to see the details in the later half of the video. So first we are going to start off with the classification of acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage. So what is the classification? So right now in this current WHO fifth edition, if you see acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage, it is subdivided under two headings. Previously, there were five headings. Now there are only two main headings. Okay. So the first heading is acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage with defining genetic abnormality. This one and the second important is the acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage defined immunophenotypically. Okay. Okay. So let us see. So under the heading of acute leukemia um, um, of ambiguous lineage, okay, with defining genetic abnormalities, we are having MPAL with BCR ABL1 fusion. MPAL stands for mixed phenotype acute leukemia. So the number one acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage with defining genetic abnormality is those with BCR ABL1 fusion. The second one is MPAL with KMT2A rearrangement. And now in the current edition, current WHO fifth edition. There is acute ambiguous leukemia with other defined genetic alterations, okay, which includes MPAL with ZNF384 rearrangement and acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage with BCL11B rearrangement. So these are the two novel or new entities which have been introduced in the current WHO fifth edition, okay, that is MPAL with ZNF384 rearrangement and acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage with BCL11B rearrangement. So for both the conditions, you need to have 20% more than equal to 20% blast. So about the MPAL with ZNF384 rearrangement, it is the most commonly, most commonly, what is the immunophenotype of uh, MPAL with ZNF, uh, Z, ZN4384 rearrangement? It is B or myeloid type, okay, B myeloid type, okay. So both the B type and B lymphoid and myeloid type, okay, phenotype is there under this rearrangement. So this is the most common immunophenotype, okay. It is present mainly in the pediatric cases and accounts for 50% of the pediatric B lymphoid or myeloid MPAL with fusion partners that is TCF3, EP300, TAF15, etc. Okay. And this variety, this that is MPAL with ZNF384 rearrangement, it accounts for 20% of all the MPAL cases. Okay. And ZNF384 rearrangement is present in 48% of the B lymphoid or myeloid. Uh, phenotype MPAL. Okay, so this is about the MPAL with ZNF4384 rearrangement. So I have also discussed, you know, few extra points regarding this at the time of classification only. Similarly, I will discuss also about acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage with BCL1B rearrangement. Uh, again, for the diagnosis, 20% and more blast is required. Secondly, the most common immunophenotype associated with this particular rearrangement is T lymphoid or uh, myeloid MPAL. Okay, also it is present, you know, also along with this particular rearrangement, they can present as acute undifferentiated leukemia. It accounts, this kind of rearrangement is accounting for 10 to 15 percent of the MPAL cases and nearly it accounts for one third of all the uh, T lymphoid or myeloid uh, phenotype, okay, or immunophenotype, okay. Now, this is the first group that is uh, acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage with defining genetic abnormality. The second important group is acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage defined immunophenotypically that is mainly with the help of flow cytometry. So what are the headings under this? We are having MPAL uh, uh, B lymphoid or myeloid type, MPAL T lymphoid myeloid type, MPAL rare types, acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage NOS and acute undifferentiated leukemia. Okay. So what are the changes under this heading okay, versus the uh, previous fourth edition? So the changes which has been made in the current WHO fifth edition are the classification pattern is new with acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage arranged under into two families. Okay, so one, one is those which are having defining genetic abnormality and those which are immunophenotypically defined as we have already seen over here. Okay, previously such division wasn't there. Okay, but now they are grouped under these two families. Novel genetic findings uh, listed as subtypes uh, under acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage with other defined genetic alteration which we have already seen over here. If you can see these are the two important novel uh, 
you know uh, uh, subtypes that that we have already discussed in details over here okay okay then the third important uh, change is that lineage assignment criteria for mpal are refined to emphasize principles of intensity and pattern so we are going to see what is the meaning of the intensity and what is the meaning of the pattern over here that and how we are using this okay for uh, our for assigning a particular lineage so the most important thing over here that we will understand is the lineage assignment criteria for mpal so what is the lineage assignment criteria so what is the criteria when you will say that this particular cell belongs to the b lineage or it is for the t lineage or it is for the myeloid lineage okay so how do you assign okay so over here b lineage for b lineage the first criteria is they should be cd90 strong cd19 should be strong along with that one or more of the following should also be strongly ex expressed either cd10 cd22 or cd79 a so one or more of these three so out of these three at least one okay one or more of this should be also strongly expressed along with a strong cd19 okay now over here strongly expressed means what what is the meaning of strongly expressed strongly expressed over here means cd19 strong means the intensity okay of cd19 should exceed 50 percent of that of the normal b cell progenitor by flow cytometry okay so this is the meaning of intensity that has been you know laid down in the current who so they are saying that they are you know that they have emphasized the principles of intensity so intensity means this okay so the intensity of the cd19 should exceed at least 50 percent of that of the normal b cell progenitor by flow cytometry so if the cd19 expression is strong in that situation one or more of the following should also be strongly expressed for assigning the particular cell as a b lineage either cd10 cd22 or cd79 a so this is the bare minimum at least one of them one out of these three now one more thing we have to keep in mind over here if you think that along with the b lineage the t lineage cells are also there in that situation you cannot use cd79 a so cd79 a only should be used if t lineage is not under consideration so if you are not suspected that b lineage is along the t is along with t lineage if you are not suspecting the t lineage in that case you can use cd79 a as a marker of b lineage if you are suspecting t lineage then you cannot use cd79 a okay so once more the first important criteria is a strong cd19 along with one or more of the following as strongly expressed cd10 cd22 or cd79 a at least one of them should be strongly expressed one or more of them or so either this first condition should be fulfilled or the second condition is if the cd19 is not very strong if the cd19 is weak that means the intensity of the staining is less than 50 percent of that of the normal b cell progenitor in that case at least two two or more of the following should also be strongly expressed that is cd10 cd22 and cd79 a so instead of one you should have at least two or more of these factors should be positive and again for cd79 n should be used only if the t lineage is not under consideration just like over here okay so this is the basic diagnostic or lineage assignment criteria for the b lineage or the b lymphocyte series or the b lymphoid series okay so only when these markers are or this criteria lineage criteria is uh, you know fulfilled that you are going to say that a particular lineage of cell is b lineage okay now coming to the t lineage for the t lineage cd3 cd3 has to be positive i will tell you how either cytoplasmic or surface cd3 positivity has to be there and that should be done using cd3 epsilon chain antibody this should be used okay and the intensity in part should exceed 50 percent of that of the mature t cells by flow cytometry or if you are do if, if you are not having uh, you know flow cytometry available in that case immunocytochemistry is also accepted or icc should be positive but you have to use non zeta chain antibody reagent non zeta chain antibody reagent has to be used in that case so for the t lineage cytoplasmic or surface cd3 should be positive by flow cytometry intensity at least 50 percent of that of the maturity cells or by immunocytochemistry positive using non zeta chain reagent okay okay and for the myeloid lineage for the myeloid li lineage myeloperoxidase positivity should be there wherein the intensity in part should exceed 50 percent of the mature neutrophil level okay or or if mpo is not positive then at least look for monocytic differentiation for monocytic differentiation two or more of the following markers should be positive 
न्यूरोन स्पेसिफिक एनोलेस सी डी इलेवन सी सी डी फोर्टीन सी डी सिक्सटी फोर लाइसोजाइन ओके सो टू और मोर ऑफ दिस मार्कर शुड बी प्रेजेंट फॉर मोनोसाइटिक डिफ्रेंसिएशन ओके सो आइर एमपीओ पॉजिटिव फॉर माइलॉर्ड लीनेज और मोनोसाइटिक डिफ्रेंसिएशन शुड बी देर फॉर माइलॉर्ड लीनेज सो आई टोल्ड यू over here in the current uh, you know who fifth edition that there is a principle of intensity has been implemented that i have already shown you okay either for b or t lymphoid 50% or of more, uh, you know uh, and or more intensity should be there as compared to the normal b or t cell progenitor respectively okay now another principle is also very important principle over here is that uh, you know for uh, giving a particular li lineage for example b lineage not only cd19 along with that other markers i have also to be expressed okay one two or more of these marker like cd10 cd20 to cd17 either of these marker have to be positive as well so we are using multiple markers and not only that the pattern of expression is also important for example i will tell you in myeloperoxide now over here the normal maturing myeloid series cells they are showing variable myeloperoxidase positivity okay so that is very important that pattern of expression so when you are looking at a particular group of cells and you are seeing mpo positivity it should be like the variable mpo positivity that is seen in the maturing myeloid cells a dim uniform myeloperoxide uh, you know positivity should not be taken as positive in that case okay so the pattern of expression also becomes important okay so when you are writing an answer on acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage this classification has to be you know written in details without any mistakes secondly what are the changes you have to give okay bare minimum and the lineage assignment criteria should be according to the who fifth edition in exactly the same way that i have given you over here okay and this much you have to say have to write in the exam okay so acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage if you see they are rare accounting for less than 4% of of all the acute leukemias and it affects both the children as well as adults now there are two terminologies which are very commonly asked in the exam that acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage or mpal that is mixed phenotype acute leukemia can be either bi phenotypic or it can be bi lineal so what do you mean by bi phenotypic bi phenotypic as you can see over here that there is a single population of abnormal progenitors which are expressing antigens from two or more lineage so over here see green is one li one lineage ant antigen over here and if you see red is another lineage antigen and the same cell is expressing both the uh, you know lineage antigens so this is an aberrant expression okay a single population of cell with two or more lineage of antigen markers okay they are called as bi phenotypic whereas bi lineal means so bi lineal means that there are two separate population of cells in in the same individual okay so this is one group of cells this is another group of cells okay so two population of abnormal progenitors each of a different lineage is existing so i hope you understand what is the meaning of bi phenotypic and what is the meaning of bi lineal okay the best method of lineage assignment is flow cytometric based immunophenotyping remember this point ihc is not the best method usually acute leukemia of ambiguous li lineage is associated with a very poor prognosis and if you see the presentation of all the different forms of acute leukemia of ambiguous lineage if you see they are basically you know presenting with cytopenias and in some condition leukocytosis can be there and all of them have a poor prognosis okay so this is the bare minimum that you have to write in the exam for obtaining full marks okay now apart from that if you are having time okay if you are having time then i have also discussed the individual ones also with their diagnostic criteria in more detail so first we are going to see certain important points about mpal with bcr abl1 fusion it is the most common uh, you know cytogenetic abnormality seen in mpal that is bcr abl1 fusion okay it is a de novo acute leukemia full